take this off will be like uh, twinsies. Hans and Hans and Franz. Franz. We have to, to pump, pump you up. up in the most non pump up tone. Like if they were just monotone idiots. <laughs> Hey, welcome back to our stupid reaction in some corp. I'm Rick. You fall asleep. It's your I'm Twitter for Do you watch Parks and Recreation? Nope. You ever seen it? Nope, but I know, I know who that is. Nick Offerman. Yeah, so. I know who Nick Offerman is. He quote is. on the back that said, There's nothing, there, nothing, there, ha, there has never been a sadness that can't be cured by breakfast food. He's Mr. Deborah Messing. Yeah, he is. Yeah. Uh, hey, welcome back. This is uh, Stupid Reactions, idiots. How you doing? Good? Good. Glad to hear it. Welcome to Classic Month. Well, I guess we're right in the thick of Classic we're Month. We're in the meat of it. This is our... The, the taint of it. <laughs> is that the meat? I don't think the taint is the meat. I'm going to be honest with you. <laughs> I don't... It's the nerve. <laughs> Uh, a lot of nerves in your t- ah, anyways. Anyway. Today, <laughs> it's our third classic of the month. Not our third classic overall. We've no. seen quite a few classics quite a few now. Classics. Uh, but our second Telugu, because I think we had the musical one last time. The one where the, the guy was the musician, correct? Right. Uh, and then uh, now we just reviewed the 1950s- Sorry, movie review. Yes, obviously you saw yes. the title, idiots. Yeah. Uh, the 1957 uh, film, Maya... Baz- Bazaar. Maya yeah, Bazaar. Maya Bazaar. Uh, which I've seen it all together, and then I've also seen it like Maya Bazaar. Right, like and separated. I, so I don't know which I don't one know. it is. Uh, but it's a uh, 1957 comedy drama film, and one. Of, I don't know what the oldest classic is, but it's probably around this time. Yeah, that we've seen probably right. I think so. Fifties. I fifties. I can't. Had, well, well, Pooh wasn't older than that, right? No. Well, it was fifties. The poo was the fifty. Oh, poo was the fifties. Oh, poo, really? I think so. Anyways, um, but I could be wrong. It could be sixty-one. Directed by you want to say his name for me, please? Uh, yeah, directed by. Uh, Sorry, I wow. I don't know what's going on here. Uh, K V, but also the full name is Kadri Venkata Reddy, also known as K V Reddy. Uh, that people call him K V Reddy. Yeah, K V Reddy. And then starring up a lot of a, a, a lot of gamut people. of people, but uh, N T R Rao. Uh, S.V. Rao, 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 and then, sh- say her name? Savitri. Savitri, who I know is a, a big, big star uh, of the time in, in cinema. But obviously, it's a 100 spin spoiler review. This came in 1957. If you haven't seen it, <laughs> go watch it, go, go back. watch it. Uh, <laughs> unless you want to be spoiled. But uh, I guess the synopsis here is, um, I don't know how to pronounce that. Promises, say it. Say. Balor- Balarama promises Subhadra to get his daughter married to her son. But when the Pandavas loses their kingdom to the Kauravas, Balarama breaks his promise. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Rick, it. your initial thoughts, please. I have a paragraph. Okay. Did you really think that a three-hour Indian 1957 colorized Telugu language motion picture adaptation of a folk tale that is based on the epic Mahabharata would not only entertain but impress this 21st century American dude? Well, you were right. From start to finish, I simply could not stop smiling and oftentimes shaking my head at the absolute brilliant and elevative artistry of this cinematic masterpiece that felt like the Marvel film of its time. Aptly called the market of illusions, it truly is that because director KV Reddy and team incorporate pretty much every possible visual effect and magic trick known to man at this time and sometimes do so with Oscar level excellence. Anybody who loves movie making, especially the history of visual effects, should add this movie to their all time favorite list. But you hate Telugu films. Yeah, apparently. Our brand is going to be thrown off. I know. What can I tell you? We're supposed to only like Bollywood films. Yeah, I know. That's the rumor on the streets. <laughs> Sorry. I just like messing with idiots. Uh, <laughs> I enjoyed this film as well. Uh, this is a, I, and I totally agree. It almost felt, it, obviously nothing like the film that I'm about to say, but of the time, like a Wizard of Oz experience. Yeah. Right? yeah. Of, of all the kind of magical Magic tricks yeah. that kind of went on. And it's, it's, and it's kind of strange because this is a story that obviously 
Indians and especially probably Hindus are going to be able to relate to oh my goodness a billion, a billion times, times more. more. It was almost a hist like not a history lesson, but almost like an educational lesson a yeah. little bit. It felt like as well because obviously outside of what we've heard about you know um, in films or just obviously we uh, probably most known of um, uh, Krishna. Um, but like all these other people that are related to her, right. or who their mothers are, who are, it was almost, it felt a little like I was playing catch up at times. I was like, okay, who's going on here? Yeah, <laughs> I, who's the relationship? I here? made it a point to not freak out over trying to follow the story. Yeah. It got yeah. easier as, as, yeah. as it went on. And I could catch up and go, oh, now that makes sense. But it felt like if like, obviously we knew who these people were automat already, that we could have enjoyed this probably even more because we, I wouldn't have had to, even though I did enjoy this film, but like, you probably already knew uh, who obviously this god was or this avatar was and knew their personality traits and knew what to expect and you're like, oh, this guy's gonna be a lot of fun. Right. Where I was like, okay, this is, this is that, that's him. But as it went on, I, I felt like it did a really good job of not only pacing a, a three hour film, right? But it, it gave you enough of kind over of over three hours, yeah, yeah, uh, almost the same kind of uh, Mughali Azam spectacle mm -hmm. of it with the grandeur of the sets, yeah, and 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 all that, and then also on top of that, a lot of the the technical side of this film that it's just for the time, it's it's one of the reasons you love watching some classics because it it was literally movie magic back in the day. Ugh. Now it's all amazing CGI and it's it's incredible, but they had to do practical things that had just hadn't been done. They had to think of creative ways to do it, and this film kind of just delivered on all those, right? On all of it. I just kept shaking my head at the greatness of, and the amount of visual effects and practical effects that were in this thing. Uh, just, you name it, go down the list of all of the potential things that could have been done at the time, miniatures, Map painting, physical effects, stop motion, uh, split screen. They did everything. Yeah. Nonstop. Yeah. I just, it's just, it just, and sometimes, like The Wizard of Oz, there's some visual effects that still work actually for mm -hmm. The Wizard of Oz. And there were some visual effects here that, like, when the fire came that was an illusionary fire. I was wondering how they did it. Me too. <laughs> I thought, how the heck did you guys do it? My guess is they they obviously put it over the other film. It was an overlap. Overlap. It was, exactly. Film, yeah. Right. It was a four, it was a two it was a two segment film that was overlapped, but it was seamless. It was so good. Yeah. That. Uh, uh, yeah, I just and I agree. I think there's people in India who know this this epic this poem. Uh, this tale, or they, know about they the know gods, and they're that like when he brings out his arrow to shoot it, and the other guy when they're having that fight, and he's throwing his scepter, I believe it is. Forgive me if that's the wrong word. You know what to expect in the way that modern day people know that when Thor grabs his hammer, what's going to happen? Mm -hmm. And I th felt a lot of people, and I just, I just couldn't. There is a special endearing quality to the humor. The goofballness of it, yeah, especially the um, second half when they got to the the fake wedding, yeah, which, the two goofy guys, the two goofy guys, and then him playing, um, yeah, um, being her, say Savitri's character uh, or Saucy, yeah, right? him being her was great. I thought she did a great job in pretending to be. Him. There had to have been some jump scares in the theater in the day when the face transformations take place into the lion and into the monkey because that was full close up on the screen jump. That it had to have been a lot of fun. People must have been leaving the theater telling everybody, you've got to go see this movie. Yeah, absolutely. And like I said, my, my, probably my favorite part, even though I enjoyed the entire thing for the, for the spectacle, I think it really came into, especially the comedy aspect. Yeah. In the second part, when they, he, um, I, I forget the, the I know, God me too. Thing. I can't pronounce any of their We names, can't pronounce And them. I apologize. But the one that goes, ha, 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 the one that was in the big second half for it, which was Still great in the film. Still great. I still enjoyed that. Still That's fun the, to watch. The food part in the second half. Yeah. But the, the comedy that was basically nonstop after they kind of went to do the wedding part. Yeah. Um, was, I thought it really stuck. And it was a lot of physical comedy. It was yep. a lot of kind of just stuff that it, you, it's not like they're speaking a different dialect that we've talked about that we can't understand. It was just, I thought it was a really well filmed 
um, really well written for all the comedy to come through. I thought a lot of the weird, quirky characters, like the the doof prince, I thought was funny. <laughs> I just thought he was just like an idiot. Yep. <laughs> and I I I like that aspect to it. I like the the. Oh God, I wish I knew his name. The God. The, right. The, <laughs> that one. I'm gonna call him. I don't know. Which he's name. he's actually I think. Forgive, forgive me if I'm wrong, but I remember reading up on it that he was a demon because when he's showing up, like when the foot is her foot, but it's really his foot, it's covered in hair and the hand is covered in hair and that was supposed to signify demon. the hairy hand and the hairy foot was a demon. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and I think they've said it uh, a few times. And also, even though I thought they had a great colorized version in this film, uh, which uh, was apparently the, it's like 50th yeah. anniversary that yeah. they decided to spend like two million dollars and kind of restore it and colorize it. We'll talk it. about that in a second, yeah. Um, but I thought they did, they did a good job, but there were some aspects on the site that we were watching it on that it sometimes, I don't know happened to you, the subs just didn't show up. Yeah, sometimes the subs just faded out. And it was only a few times, but it just, <laughs> there was a, a couple times it just, nope, just, there's no, no subs. subs. Yeah. No subs at all. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I, I enjoyed that. I enjoyed all the songs. I thought they were Me all, too. the grandeur of them was incredibly they beautiful. Were, they were also very different. Some yeah. were really quirky, silly. Some were really grand and beautiful. I like the, the whole, the three song set on the boat. <laughs> Yeah. With the, the first two are on the boat, and then the Krishna and I think his wife, was his I, wife? I think so, yeah. We're on the boat, and then the third one was like, and they all kind of sang the same rendition of uh, the songs. But the, the way they filmed the sky and the moon, and I think a lot of them, uh, from what I read, were actually day shots. Oh, okay. But they made it. They made it look like a night shot. Kind of nighttime. Yeah. Uh, which I thought was great, and just the whole... It was similar, to, but very different to like Mughal -e Azam in terms of just the grandeur of it all, the beauty of it all. I think Indian films of this type benefit from colorization of the time because of how colorful the places, palaces were, the clothes are. Um, and so I, I think it's, it's a great thing that they've decided to restore well, some of this. And I, I agree. And I was never a fan for many, many years of, of colorization. It's different here, though. And it's because it's different here. And part of the reason it's different here is because I don't think we care enough. And it shows in the work. The amount of work that went into the colorization and the amount of money that went into the colorization. And I know from stuff I read about this that to get the flesh tones, they needed to get something like... 35,000 different kinds of shadings that they blended into everything in order for it to actually look like a, a skin tone. And the same thing on each of the individual petals on the flowers. Turner Network didn't do that. They said, oh, flesh tone, <laughs> all humans have that flesh tone. And it, it shows, it, the oh. lack of care makes the colorized versions an annoyance. Whereas anything we've seen now, when it's colorized, I feel the love that went into restoring this and wanting you to capture what it originally was like on set. And I felt they did equally as well in sound restoration. Mm -hmm. The sound restoration of the songs. And they actually not only restored sound, they actually took the time to take like 16 instruments and re-record over the original track really? some live instrumentation to embellish that sense of the full orchestra because so much of it gets lost in degenerative sound. Yeah. Especially back in the day when it was not, you know, yeah. it wasn't Dolby Sound that yeah. they were recording with. So this is probably for me of a film that had sound restoration without question the best sound restoration I've heard of a classic film. Yeah. It was incredible. Um, and I thought all the performances did really well. I, there was nothing that stuck out for me kind of like um, outside of she, her, I thought she, she did a really good job, especially when it came to impersonating that other guy. Yeah. Uh, I thought that was, she did a really good job at switching it all up, but it, this wasn't really like a performance driven thing. This was more of like the story driven and, and some of the actors. Story and stylized. Yeah. I felt more like. Some more than others, obviously. Yeah, I felt more like we were sitting in the dirt somewhere in the, in, in the outskirts. People were telling a play almost. In yeah. a play, yeah. yeah. We were watching these people do this hyper stylized play. So all of the hyper stylized moments for me were just endearing. Yeah. I just couldn't stop smiling at watching what I felt. That that was the other thing that I felt every frame of this, not just, the, I'm not talking about restoration, which we were just talking about, but throughout this, one of the reasons I kept smiling was I felt like every single actor and every single person involved with this was just 
they were doing this because they loved making movies. Yeah. I mean, like. And how long did it make them to take? How uh, how long did it take them to make this film? Do you know? I think it was a, at least a year from concept to, to finish. Okay. That's, that's fast. Uh, I thought it was going to be longer than that. Yeah, I thought it was a year for them to completely do it. And that's with not just the two different languages, but they had sometimes different actors for the roles because some of them didn't speak Telugu or, or Tamil. Mm -hmm. uh, but I, I just, I thought, I, I bet if you spoke to every single person who was in this, they were doing it for the love of movie making. And it just exudes out of every single person on the screen at every moment. And I, I do know that the, and forgive us for not knowing all of their names, but I know that the, the, the gentleman who plays Krishna. In TR, right? He was very concerned first and didn't feel like he would do an adequate job uh, of, of portraying Krishna. And ironically, he was so well received that I think he did like 30 more roles as Krishna, as Krishna? because he was so beloved as portraying Krishna, which is, that's I mean, pretty. that's, you got to feel as an Indian. Yeah. <laughs> I, I would have trepidation if I was an Indian knowing about yeah. Krishna. Uh, it's probably the same way Jim Caviezel probably felt portraying Jesus in the, in, yeah. in the passion of the Christ. It's like, this is a character where people are going to come at me with some pretty serious, understandably critical eyes. Yeah. And uh, he apparently was beloved in this role. Yeah, I thought he did well. I did too. Um, I, I, for, I think it's the first time outside of Akshay in, in OMG playing, I think he was playing Krishna, right? Yeah, and we've seen some smaller comedic things. That was people, more comedic, obviously. Like in, in PK, <laughs> that guy was dressed as Krishna, but we've never seen a full fledged, like, where, where they were the character. Yeah. Like, this is like, this is a full on. The gods are part the of the story. world, yeah, and then uh, this is their story of their relationships, right? With their wives or their daughters. Or We've their seen mothers. representational things <laughs> of it and like interpretations, but not direct a full film that's their story. That's what I was. I was also concerned before I started. It. I was like, Am I going to be able to get? Yeah, why Krishna is here? Yeah, on on, the, and so I was concerned, but I, they, I think it was kind of just they were characters that happened to be gods, and they were this was kind of a family story almost. I knew there'd be no <laughs> way I could begin to comprehend what I was seeing in terms of the story. It it, it would be a thousand things that went over. Yeah, it would be like someone who has never been introduced to the Old Testament, watching the Ten Commandments and yeah. trying to wrap their head around the history of the children of Israel and all of that, and just say, just enjoy the epic nature of yeah. this film. Just enjoy the epic nature. Yeah. And that's how I felt. I, this was way over my head. Oh, yeah. Uh, in terms of the, the source material. But I thought they did a good job. In I mean, though, this film was made for Indians. This yeah. Was a thousand percent made for Indians. Um, but I thought it's it's an easily understandable story because it's, it's essentially just a normal kind of outside of obviously the arranged marriage and stuff. Yeah. Uh, all that kind of stuff. But it's a family story. Daughters, mothers, dads, but with kings. Yeah. yeah. And I... But, and I as much as it truly is, it's an Indian film for, for Indian people. I, I love this film in, in ways that some of the other classics, because people, I think people would expect us, and when I refer to people, I mean Americans, for example, people in the West, if we referred to them to a classic, if we were to mention something that comes from Bollywood, it would be anticipated and expected, right? I love the fact that this isn't a Bollywood film mm -hmm. that you can point to and say, look, guys, even as far back as 1957, we here should have been paying closer attention to what was going on outside of America because we had no idea that films this good were being made in this region of this country at this time, at this level. It just, it, it undergirds everything we've ever cared about on the channel about y'all need to know about what's going on in India because <clears throat> too often it's been relegated to just the Bollywood cheese when some of the most important contributions to this art form have been happening for the better part of 60, 70, 80 years now. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and we didn't talk about it, but you, you like the, the two really quirky guys. I love them. The there was almost like a... Uh, Very Pedosa. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Those were like the big over-the-top guys. And even when they're watching, like, the, the silliness of them watching him eat his snacks and they're all really? just sitting there going... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was very of the time, but we've said it all the time. Obviously, you don't you don't judge films from 1957 the way you judge them now. No, based them on the their time, their time, and what was going on at that time. 
um, and it's it's almost you get to take a lot of your critic hat off almost. That's why alone one yeah. reason, even, not fully. Obviously, you're gonna have critiques of old films, and we have, and and you're not gonna be able to enjoy some like you are sure. others. But I feel like you get to take your critic's hat off a little bit, especially with something of this old. And you're like, I just want to enjoy this film. Yeah. And I think most would, as long as you're not trying to like, if, if unless you're Indian and you can't fully understand, obviously they're relationships but even if you're an american you can just enjoy the grandeur the yeah. pictures the set design the songs of course you can enjoy the humor you can enjoy there at the end yeah if you love movie making you like the visual effects yeah. if you love movie you making you, arrow yeah, you, you can't, i just if you love movie making you it may not float your boat it may not be your kind of film but there were moments where maybe I wasn't tracking with the story and the acting is stylized, so I'm not going to be empathetic to what this experience is. It's not that. I, 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 could, I could literally just watch this thing for the full three hours just to relish in the love of movie making and how much work went into entertaining people. It's just, I think it's a beautiful movie. Yeah, yeah. yeah I do as well, and I'm, I'm so glad uh, we're... Three for three currently. This really great. Classic month. All very different as well. Yeah, and uh, I'll tell you what. Let's see. Mark my words because I'm keeping a track. I'm keeping the list. This is one of those movies that's going to be tough when it comes down to the dummies for next year because you're going to have a conversation about visual effects. And I promise you something Off like RRR is going to get nominated. Mm -hmm. But it's going to be up against this for the special effects of its day. Yeah, that would be tough. Right? That would be tough. It's going to happen, I promise. <laughs> this will be nominated for visual effects by me, for uh, sure. And, and production, de I mean... Uh, and production design. Production design. Yeah, and production design. Um, and maybe even direction, we'll see. Yeah, yeah, this is, uh, this is a really good one. Great so, movie. Uh, let us know what other Telugu films we should watch, including classics, and what should be our next classic as a whole that we should watch down below. <laughs> Thank you.